Hey, what's up guys? I want to talk about something cool today. It's called Lambda Calculus. And basically, I just want to introduce a couple of rules that it entails and maybe that'll be a nice little mind exercise to think better about how we program functionally. And so Lambda Calculus isn't actually useful in your life. But, and it's not really related to calculus, it's just a nice little phrase that I feel like is named weirdly. But the essential gimmick of it is the, the idea that every program can be re represented in terms of pure functions. It's this Turing complete idea where there's no data types except for what are called pure functions. And what that means is, it's just a function that can take in inputs and return outputs. Mm -hmm. So in lambda calculus, there are no ints, no booleans, nothing. There's only pure functions. And we try to make this more useful to think about by naming particular special functions these, these uh, primitive values. Like, for example, this would be in what is called church encoding. We would name it true. Now, it's still a function, but we can think of it in terms of, oh, when I see this result, that means in church encoding, this is true. Alonzo Church, he made lambda calculus and church encoding. He basically said, okay, we can call each of these functions, these pure functions, um, data types. You know, we, we can we can arbitrarily define these functions as our data types and every time we see them we'll essentially think of them as this alias and we'll use that in our calculations but in reality we know that they're really just functions so i, I want to break down what these funky looking symbols are actually and in lambda calculus you're you're going to have a lambda in front of every parameter input so in the normal language uh, this would look something like taking in the parameters x and y and returning something. The last thing on the tail end is going to be what you return. So it's kind of like error notation. And you can actually call stuff later on, but we're not going to do that right now. So false in church encoding is actually this. So what true is, is it's taking in two arbitrary variables. Remember, these variables are functions. They might look like booleans, but technically in real life we know that they're functions. So x and y, they're, they're just functions. So true returns the first of two variables, and false returns the second of these two variables. Now, we can we can kind of extend our little exercise, you know, explore the little world that we've set up for ourselves. What would a basic operation, a basic binary logic operation like not look like? Okay, let's think about this, all right? So we want to construct a function that takes in functions as a parameter and will return the effective not. So we're going to trust that for our first parameter, uh, okay, not is a unary operator. So how many, how many parameters is it going to take? Well, it's going to take just one, and we'll call it f to make it simple. Now, what's it going to return? This is interesting. So if the function that we pass in to f in our not function is true, then we want it to return false. And if we pass in false into f, we want it to return true. Okay, okay, let, let, let's think about that. What do I want to return given f? Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to take my function f, and it's going to take in two parameters. There's no commas, by the way, but I'm just going to drop a comma here to make it easy to understand. In the first parameter, we want it so that, let, let, let's take the case that the function we passed in is true. Well, 
if it's true, then this function is going to return the first parameter, which it should be false. Okay. So if it's true, we take the first parameter and we return false, and our job is done. On the other hand, if whatever we pass in as lambda f is false, that means we take the second parameter. So our answer is whatever we drop into the second part right here, which should be true. Hmm. Okay, this is pretty interesting. So what we've essentially done is we've taken in a function, and now we're calling now we're calling that function, but we're passing it in essentially the labels. This is the same thing as, does that kind of make sense? I'm going to drop the parentheses in here uh, because it makes it easier to read. And what would happen is if you try to call this function, um, the, we, would, we would essentially start substituting things in. Like if I were to call, you know, I would put the, drop the alias true in here, which would look like this. And then I would solve for this. I would put this in for the spot of f. I would drop that in for f and replace it. And that whole process of simplifying and replacing in for parameters, that's called beta reduction. I'm not going to go into that. But that's all that means is simplifying, you know, calling the function, you know, plugging stuff in. That, that is how we solve these problems. All right, let, let, let's explore a little bit more. That was exciting, wasn't it? All right, so. I want to talk about AND. This is a little bit trickier. AND is a binary operator. Okay. Binary, we know. So we're going to take in two functions. So far, so good. What do we want to return? Well, we want to approach this problem by thinking intuitively. Um, it, it, it just kind of makes sense to think about this and Immediately, one instinct that you should have is, hey, we should probably call one of these functions with another function of the parameter. So that, that's kind of what my first impression was when I was thinking about this problem. Basically, it just looks like f is meant to call g or g is meant to call f in the final answer because if you think about it like you would in the circuit, you know, when you're constructing when you're constructing these digital log the logic gates, you're going to want them to pass inputs into each other. And there's really no way that you can do that if they're kind of on the same, you know, scope of simplification. Well, I don't know. Hmm. L let's think about this in case work. So for our first function, it can either be true or false, which it can either be one of these two. Okay? We want to return it so that if it's true, well, we want it. To, we want to know if f is true and if g is true, that this expression will evaluate to true. So let's take care of that case. Actually, if f is true, the first guy in this set is true. So what does that mean? That means we're going to call this guy. And, and this takes care of the case that f is true. So if f is true and g is false, then we return false, the false function. We return g, which gives us our correct output. And if f is true and g is true, then we return true. And that's starting to look like an AND gate. Now, what about the second half? Well, if f is false, we don't really care what g is. So we're just going to put our alias for false in. We're just going to put our alias for false in, and what that looks like is this guy right here. Boom. All right. Uh, I think this is what it's supposed to look like. There, I might be missing something, but anyway, does that kind of make sense? And and you can go on further and actually experiment with the other operators like XOR. I'm going to do one more actually. And okay, so OR binary operator is going to take two in. 
All right, you gotta think carefully about this. We we are taking in the f function and the g function. I think we should use the same strategy as above, where we call f of g or something. Uh, okay, f takes two function, two parameters. Okay, let's break this case by case. F if we say f is true, then it's going to take the first parameter. Okay, so if f is true, then we already know right off the bat we're going to want to return true. Now, if f is false, we still have our saving grace. G could be true. We should return g. If f is false, we're taking the second parameter and we're basically hoping that. Hey, if g is true, then it's going to return true. But if both f and g are false, this function is going to return false. All right, so let's go ahead and replace our alias so that it is true lambda calculus. And this is not real. Let's keep this parenthesis here. OK, and this is amazing because, look, this is just pure function. And we've kind of constructed our own little world of, you know, encoding our own data type, our own Boolean. And by the way, church encoding also has integers too. They're just really um, convoluted. But anyway, we've defined an alias for pure functions, and we've defined our own little system here where we can take, we can define three main basic. Um, logic gates and we've turned them into something that follows our system. It, it, it's consistent with all of our rules. 